Hi, welcome to Draw Plans. I'm Tom Norris and today we're dealing with land registry plans. We're going to use TurboCAD to create land registry pl plans for uh, a property that's been split up into four flats. Uh, now, this is one of our projects being done over the last week or so and I thought it might be a useful um, uh, project to a to push along the uh, the CAD skills, uh, but also uh, for young technicians or architectural designers who don't know too much about land registry plans. Um, we thought we'd give you an insight as to uh, how we deal with some of our projects. Now, no two projects are the same when it comes to land registry plans, but what we get sometimes is, well, like this is a perfect example. This is a client who owns a property um, that is has been split up into four flats maybe 20 years ago or so. And the plans that um, the land registry have are basically uh, pretty poor. In other words, I've seen them and uh, they're not very good. They were hand-drawn plans. Uh, the colouring wasn't very good. It's faded in places. So as it comes to selling a, a lease or, uh, you know, if a property is being exchanged in the land registry, they generally look to have better plans created so that they actually know what they have and the plans are way more detailed than what they might have been 20 years ago or 30 years ago. So in this lesson, uh, well, I'm giving you an example here. This is the property in question. So one of the things I did was I, I, did this, I went up on Google. Um, I found this uh, street photo of the property. So I have a clear visual as in what the layout, the potential layout is. Because when you've done as many properties as I have, when you've done plans for as many properties as I have, a quick look on the outside tells me a whole load. Uh, again, I did the elevations. Um, I, I did not only the elevations, I went up on, uh, I went on the satellite to have a look. The satellite tells me, you know, about extensions and so on. And, um, like, like I say, this is the property in question, so it's a um, it's pretty standard, but it doesn't have a loft conversion or anything like that. But it does have uh, has been pushed out on two floors, on a on a small extension. Um, right, so we I've as I say I've got a visual now. The client uh, normally what would happen is if the client has. Uh, reasonable PDFs. Uh, we could, in theory, create the design, create the layout plans from existing PDFs, providing they're reasonable. But also, it's a question of accuracy. Uh, some of the PDFs we get are estate agent plans we might get in on a property. Uh, they can be grossly. Uh, it can be grossly misleading in that uh, they're, they're out. Anyway, what the client, the client, and the client is a solicitor, and the client sent over what he had, which is uh, the old plans, but even them, they were in paper format. They, they, they would have been like in A1, which is pretty large, and or A3, and he wasn't able to scan and send an A3. Uh, so what he did was he scanned in two A4s, and this is this is what he sent us, and it, it, I mean, it's pretty rubbish. You really do need to know what you're doing because um, I'm just joining up a couple here, and as you can see, the, from here to there is meant to be from here to there. So in other words, uh, one is out of scale on the other, and of course, none of them are to scale. Uh, so they're all over the place. This is meant to be the first floor. This is meant to be the ground floor. And old drawings which aren't uh, really uh, very accurate. And then to make it even worse, he's scanned it in and printed off. And then that's even even more. He, he, he making it even worse are very, very hard. Uh, what I would say is I, I offered the client um, to do the you know the measurement survey so we could d detail it properly but he was insistent uh, not to have the measurement survey done and for us to see if we can make the drawings from these old plans because he, he's 
he's he's mindful that whilst these plans were good for a hundred years, they'll be good for another hundred years. All we need to do is basically do a electronic version or a CAD version of these plans. So this is what the project is all about. So with that in mind, what I did was um, I rescale these PDFs. And what we do is we use standard items. Uh, and in this case, there's no measurements on the rooms or anything. But one of the things that we generally do to get it pretty close is we use standard doors. Standard door, 30 inches if it's imperial. If it's metric, it's 762 mil. So basically, um, as, as an example, what we do is we, well, I can show you quickly. Uh, let me just turn off, uh, turn off the... Um, turn off the snaps and let's see if I can give you a, a number here now so technically that should be 762 that line but of course we can see it's miles out it's meant to be 762 mil it's 2287 so what, what we do there is we type in 762 and then it presents it says that this is about 33 percent of the actual uh, proper sizing so what we do is we copy that and then we log off and we click it again the whole image and then we pop this scale in that we took and we do it on the uh, horizontal and the vertical and then we hit return and now that's been scaled so now if we type in uh, draw a line we should have something close to what it should be so remember, we're aiming for 7.62. It's coming up as 7.19. So it's a, it's a little bit out. So generally, what we do is we do this two or three times, and then we uh, we get we we get there. In other words, we tweak it. And once we've got it, then uh, we can basically start tracing from it, which means we draw lines over it. Uh, we put one here. I'll give you an example. Put one here. Put one there then we draw the uh, horizontal lines down and the vertical lines and so on and so forth and we have to do this for all of these plans and once we've done it this is this is what we came up with this is uh, what we came up with once we've done it now it took about five or six hours and these are the plans uh, for the four flats and they're pretty accurate and uh, they needed a bit of tweaking because I can tell you now the original draftsman whoever did um, the files whoever drafted out the plans he made a few um, bloopers etc he took a few liberties um, artistic liberties or whatever call it what you want he just made mistakes like we all do to a pint but this is a generally a pretty good representation and the client is aware that it might not be it's in the region of 90 95 percent accurate not as in scaling and sizing uh, but it's a very good representation of what the ground floor of this property is now like any house that's being converted, um, you have to share out the gardens and you have to share out the, uh, the, the actual parking space. So what we did here, we were very mindful of who got what. So uh, it's always important to know which flat is which. So down the side is flat B in the communal hallway. Uh, oops, there's a mistake here. Uh, uh, the, the, one of these is flat A, so we've made a mistake, which is great because I'm using these plans um, for a, a tutorial so we can pick up on that mistake. But one, one of the flats is flat A and the other one is flat B. Uh, so one of these has to be slightly altered. Well, just a letter change. Um, so we've got two flats on the ground floor, one and then two, and then... Um, up, up as you go upstairs you come upstairs and you come up you've got you've got flat C and you've got flat T um, this one is a, a one bedroom flat uh, whilst this one is a three bedroom flat and then what happens is the garden being a nice long garden got split up uh, this this garden obviously went to the ground floor flat uh, which was garden the garden flat was B so I guess this is definitely A. So A, uh, A, A would have had a section of garden 
further up. I think it got this garden here. Where was it? This is garden A. So generally each flat gets a section of garden. You got one, two, three, four. Uh, we've had to provide a communal area for bins, uh, which is accessible to all of the flats and that's fine. And then there was two car parking spaces. If we just look at the, uh, go back and have a look at the house. You can see you can get two cars in there, a bit of hedge, a little pathway. Needs cutting, I can see that. Uh, so going back, so what we've got is those are our two car, car parking spaces allocated. Uh, hedges are represented and a little pathway. So as, fa as phase one, phase one is drafting it all out, finding the access, finding the entry points to the flats and so on. And then what we have to do is the red lines in this case are generally the borders for the property. Uh, but what we now have to do is we have to create a plan for each flat. And what we did, this is this is a plan for each flat. Uh, let me kind of zoom in as close as I can. So this is flat A, this one here. It's flat A. You can see it's being corrected on here. So flat A, uh, that's your red line. This is communal area and this is flat B at the back. So we've got flat A and then what you have to do is add on that section of garden. So this is why we've got the garden drawing as well. Again, we're showing flat A. So basically land registry, when they record this, they'll record both sets. Um, we have the red, the red line for the uh, perimeter to flat A. We're showing the garden. Um, incidentally, two things you have to add to every land registry plan uh, is the uh, North Point has to be, uh, otherwise they'll just reject you straight away. And the other thing you have to add uh, would have been the scale bar. So this is a binder file or a project file, but on the plans that we prepared, they've actually uh, got the scale bar and they've got the North Point. Uh, correctly assessed for the location etc so this uh, we're looking at one flat flat a so we go to the next flat and again you got flat b and you've got to give the address so this is flat b and flat b is showing the garden as well showing it here and showing it in the plan above and flat b also got a bit of parking so it's showing all the components or elements for flat b it's been shown on the plan so it's pretty easy for the land registry to do um, okay we go upstairs and we're looking at flat c flat c was at the back one two three bed uh no that's wrong one two three bed one two am i right is it two bed or three bed um yep yeah, it's two beds in fact one two and then living in a kitchen um, and again, it got a portion of garden and it got a bit of parking. So uh, flat C is done quite well as also, but it's, it's carefully documented. Likewise, if we go to, uh, <clears throat> we go to the last flat, which is flat D, uh, again, same, the same, you know, thick line all the way around. And we're showing which element of garden or which section of garden. So that's generally what we do now. So if I was doing this, I'd be putting in a separate plan for each um, flat. And then I'd put in what we call a location plan, which would show the actual site uh, in relation to other properties. And they would have street names and so on. So location plan, plan for each flat. And generally I'll put in uh, this as well, just to show uh, the existing and with the uh, just our perimeter on it. So what I'm doing is giving you an introduction a to what what's involved with creating land registry plans and uh, as I say the, the, how it's done most of the time we do a, a measured survey and then we create uh, but if it's for three or four floors, you've got to have a plan for each floor. You got to make sure you have the red dotted line out out. At, on the perimeter on the boundary to show the actual site and then to show the buildings etc so this is an introduction into how to create 
registry plans um, and of course it's been done with TurboCAD and you know 90% of the work is done with the uh, tool palette here on my right um, and you're looking at about eight eight to ten hours work to go from um, these kind of rubbish PDFs to uh, finished plans that actually uh, are compliant with what the land registry needs so I thought um, it'd be useful to share this for young technicians or people who are aspiring to be uh, architects or work in the, within the architectural sector. So what can I say? Um, hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully it was worth uh, your time. Uh, if you have any comments or any queries, uh, don't be shy. Just leave a comment. If you have, if you've liked the video and you think you've learned something, then you know, give us a like or maybe subscribe. That will motivate us to create more videos, um, which will further your education. So all of this was done in TurboCAD, um, and you know, that's, that's the advantage. That's the advantage of CAD, and of course, everything is scaled and it, it's electronic. It's PDF. So I'm, I'm really pleased with uh, this little project. It was a lovely project, basically a one-day project. And uh, I'm delighted to share it with you. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, see you on the next video. Thanks, Dan. Bye-bye.